Well, what's up everyone? We have a letter here. Welcome back to Kitchen Table TCG. I hope you're having yourself a fantastic day that you've settled down from the holiday weekend if you are in the United States of America. We have uh, a letter here from Tim on Discord who uh, thinks that he has some fake flesh and blood TCG cards. We're going to talk about those. We're going to help you understand how to spot fake cards if they do exist. We're going to talk about if they exist or if I, sorry, if I think they exist or if I don't think they exist, uh, we're going to have a good time. So let's hop into the top down camera. Let's read this little letter. We're not going to read the whole thing, uh, but let's see what we're dealing with. He sent me um, uh, about four cards. Both are uh, from Monarch Unlimited, and that's another thing we're going to talk about. Uh, hey, Louie, I contacted you through Discord. I was browsing through eBay, noticed a seller. The seller uh, was selling unlimited Monarch cards. He had 30 plus auctions li listed. Everyone was three non-foil, one rainbow foil of the same card. Seller has a bunch of good feedback, so I didn't think of anything. Anyway, he says when I bought the cards, uh, he saw that they were relisted again. And then so he, he started getting weirded out by it. Uh, Tim here says that he has um, handled over 15,000 flesh and blood cards from opening packs. But he felt that these look and feel different. Uh, he th says it's really subtle. Uh, he doesn't think that most people uh, would know if they were not exposed to a lot of cards, but he feels like something is different. Here's the things that he says. The edges of all the cards look like they were rough cut from a machine cutting the card that has a dull blade. Uh, he's seen this in other TCGs, but not from Fab. The front of the card is smooth and the edges look jagged. We'll talk about that. The card felt a hair stiffer than he was used to. The front of the card has a dull matte best seen on the borders when compared to real cards and you hold a card against an angle to inspect and the biggest difference was the colors um and especially on the flesh and blood logo so we're going to talk about that so that's a lot of info he also talks about that he did get a jeweler's loop out and he looked i've heard this tossed around and a long time ago there was a video that i helped somebody put together and i i really said like i don't know if this is the thing or not i talked about doing the um the uh the tm around the tm and where the tm we and he was talking about red yellow green anyway i think we have a better method of telling fakes now so let's talk about it let's uh let's take a look at these cards he sent me i did bring out the good old master set of um of monarch uh first edition and we'll compare some things and then we're going to talk about magic and what they do to prevent their cards and what i think flesh and blood has done so here are your fake quote unquote cards um, these are the fake ones and, uh, we'll look at them. I'm going to start this out by saying, I do not think that these are fake and I'll let you know why, but, um, here's your, you got a, a Rouse the ancients, then a non-foil Rouse the ancients. We'll flip them over on the back. Okay. They feel, they look, uh, they definitely feel different to me. I will say that there, there is a certain difference in the feeling, um, especially if you compare it to like a first edition. And then we have, um, a George here, a Genesis, uh, and they feel exactly the same. Um, and so I want to get out these first edition cards because I'm going to tell you right now, my, th my thoughts are that the, um, the print runs are just different. And I think that, uh, the unlimited print runs are just simply put, they're different. All right. So left hand is going to be, uh, my card and right hand is his card. Here they are face to face. Uh, I mean, they look almost identical on the, the foil side. Here's the back. I can see the color difference. All right, you see this one's uh, a lot more red. It's it's less orange and much more red. All right, so I, I understand that. It also, the, the blacks are much darker. Let's look at the fronts again. You see the blacks are a lot darker, okay? Now, I wanna talk about this. Um, first and foremost, Unlimited has a different feel, especially the new printing of Monarch Unlimited. I'm gonna open up a pack for you on camera the new monarch unlimited is japanese printed and it does feel much much different i'm going to show you the like the printer quality because I, I think that this is what he's talking about uh where's our cards here where's our uh here's our foil all right so oh sonata arconics so i do agree you see the jaggedness along the side here you can barely make it out see the jaggedness that is what he's talking about see it looks like a dull cutter blade you see the dullness on the sides? I think that's the thing that got him most concerned. Uh, the dullness. Um, let's show you on, this is his card again. And then, um, hold on, I'll, I'll show you his card. You can see just the, 
you see how that's just it's just dull it's just like the the stamp came down this way the cutter comes down this way so it's just kind of folded you, you can kind of catch it it's like folded in almost like it's it's almost like the side is is lipped a little bit now let's let's get that um that first edition out because first edition did not have this problem so we'll get the first edition back out i'm just going to leave it out this time um but first edition did not have that problem i think it's a new issue uh maybe it's not really an issue but it's a new thing you see how this one it's just straight it's it doesn't roll over let me see if uh if I can get you to, to see that. You see how the top one is just jagged and, and doesn't roll over? That's a that's a um, Japanese issue. That's a Japanese uh, print run issue. So I think that these are authentic cards, Tim. I don't think you have anything to worry about. These are authentic cards. Uh, the reason the seller, my guess, is relisting them is because he's probably a store that's opening cards for singles. And uh, the reason that they're super cheap is that they're Monarch Unlimited, and there's not a ton of value in that right now. Um, so that that's my, my gut on that. Now let's talk about how I know this for sure. Um, and if you're here six minutes in, this is, this is the goods here. This is why you stick around for my videos. So, uh, in magic, the gathering, uh, you have this green dot right here. And if you take a jeweler's loop like this and you put the, the, the loop in there, uh, and you go all the way, I'm going to show you a, a video, a, a clip. If you go all the way in on a jeweler's loop, you'll see uh, here there is an L one, two, three, four, five. It makes an L on a fake card. It'll look more like this. It'll just be a bunch of red dots. And that's because the way that the matrix printing works, um, the, the old printers are the only printers that were able to do this. And of course the fake card companies don't have access to those old printers. This is, I mean, I have purchased like Gaia's cradles on eBay, gotten the card back. It feels pretty much the same. It might feel a little bit different, but it, it feels like it's a real card and you take a look at it and you can just, you can just tell like, this is the, I think the best way, um, to tell if a card is fake or real in magic, the gathering. So, um, what does this have to do with flesh and blood? Well, uh, shout out to Cody for doing a bunch of research. Uh, Cody obviously knows this. Uh, Cody's on Team Kitchen Fables. This is Cody Fuller. Um, found this uh, when he was looking over at uh, uh, TCGs and looking over at flesh and blood cards. And he took a jeweler's loop and he looked at the whole entire card and he saw actually two instances of this. Um, I have not verified the second one because... It, I can't tell exactly where he um, was suggesting that it was, but I'll, I'll you know, we'll cover it later. But uh, basically he says, uh, if you take a jeweler's loop and if you pop it right here in this corner of the card, the uh, oh, sorry, he said top left. I think he said top left. Yeah. His card is turned over like this. So if you take a look at the top left of the card, so the cards like this at the top left of the card right up in here, if you take your jeweler's loop, which you can get on Amazon, uh, there's a light in here. You can't, I can't will that work. I don't think that'll work. This is not gonna work. You're not gonna be able to see anything. You can buy the ones that work for the computer, but you know, I'm not like a professional YouTuber or something anyway. And you'll see a LSS painted right there during the line. Now this would be incredibly hard to replicate because the font is so tiny. If you were to take a printer, some sort of crappy, um, even like a nice, like fake printer for TCGs, you would see um, that this would not be clear because the print is so tiny. It, it takes a, a very, very, very expensive printer in order to do that. Um, so I did take this jeweler's loop. I did go there on all the cards. These all look fine. Uh, the LSS is there. I really think you've just got uh, unlimited Japanese printed cards. You can just see, you see how the, it just kind of folds up here on the, the sides. Um, I think that's probably what happened here. You probably just have that kind of um, not great print run in the Japanese card. So I will send this back to you. Um, I'll get your address from, from me over on discord. I think these are real. And now let's talk about this. Let's talk about, um, do I think that there are fake flesh and blood cards? My answer to that is no, I, I do not think that, uh, the, the marketplaces are creating fake cards uh, yet. Um, I don't think we're, I think we're too close to that. I, I think the volume of flesh, I think cold foils are probably incredibly difficult to replicate. And if you were to be creating a fake card, you would be creating the cold foils. There's just not enough value in the, um, 
in the uh the especially unlimited like no one's making fake unlimited cards um but you know and he tim you said that in your article you're like maybe they're in your letter he was like maybe they're just practicing and they're you know testing the market out or whatever um but if a, if a company was making fake cards they'd be making fake cold foils i think that the cold foil process is probably too difficult for somebody to just come out and fake this soon to release two years you know we're talking about in the middle of covid in the middle of a pandemic i don't think that the people who make fake cards have had the opportunity to do that so far i think that's probably delayed i do think we will start if, if the game continues to be successful the cards continue to hold value we will see some fakes enter the marketplace uh, so i do think the content like this is super important to be looking at uh, and that's why i was so excited when sean shared that uh, sorry when um when not Sean, it says Sean's Playfield right there on my OBS. When uh, Cody shared that with me, uh, it meant a lot to me to, to be able to share that with you guys because I do think that's a really important little marker of that. So make sure you get yourself a jeweler's loop, even if you're, um, you know, especially if you're dealing with Magic the Gathering vintage cards, it's super important. I, any card uh, over like 30, 40 bucks for Magic the Gathering, I always check with a jeweler's loop. It takes you 10 seconds to do it. Um, I wouldn't worry about your flesh and blood cards unless you feel one and it's like, it, you know, definitely feels different. Um, I don't know what to say about the different print runs. I, you know, I, as long as there are things like this uh, that are provable and I anticipate that there are more than just this, you know, these two that Cody has found. As long as there are things like this, I don't think it matters if print runs feel different or kind of look different or like the coloration is slightly on or off. I mean, that, that happens in TCGs. I think what matters is that they have put things in place to be able to identify fakes or reels for the long term because I do think fakes will come out. Uh, but that being said, I don't think that there are fake uh, flesh and blood cards out there yet. Uh, but maybe in the next five years there could be. So hopefully we can continue to document document these uh, issues and these things as we go on. So anyway, hope you guys have a great day. Thank you so much um, for Tim for sharing this with me. I appreciate it. I'll get these cards sent back out to you. Hope you have a good one. Remember to be kind to the people around you and we'll see you again next video.